are watching Channel Y. Channel Y, a South Asian Canadian channel. Well, today we talk about real estate uh, business and there's a lot of questions regarding real estate business whether we should be investing in a luxury home, detached home or semi-detached or in a condo market how's the market going to behave one year two years five years from now and we have mr. Tariq Adi Tariq Adi is from Adi development Tariq welcome to channel Y thank you for having me you're very welcome uh, tell our viewers a little bit about uh, your background when did you get into this business sure uh, Addy development group uh, was started in 2007 by myself uh, and my partner who's my brother Saud Addy uh, we've grown the company organically literally from one house to uh, two billion dollars under development now and about 5,000 units uh, across the GTA so we're uh, we've uh, become a premium brand uh, that's known throughout the real estate industry in the GTA uh, and we're excited for uh, our future growth. When you say we become a premium brand, wh wh what do you mean by premium brand? Well, I, I would say that at Addy, our main, our main focus has always been our customer. Uh, we always deliver the best value in everything that we do, whether it's through driving technology, whether it's through quality, whether it's through locations, whether it's through design, uh, types of amenities that we've got in the buildings. Um, we've become synonymous as a premium company delivering on all these things. Um, when I say premium, I mean it's, it's the strength of the loyalty to the brand. And, and we're seeing a, a big following and a big loyalty to the brand where we're seeing customers buying in multiple communities, multiple units, telling other family members. Uh, so it's, uh, it's become quite a good thing with its own momentum. Yeah, uh, being uh, for such a long time in this real estate industry as a mm -hmm. developer, have you seen any sort of trends which you want to share with our viewers? Uh, well, I, I still think that the real estate market is always going to be a safe bet, no matter no matter where you are in it. Uh, uh, sp specifically in the GTA, I would say, uh, we still have about 100,000 uh, new immigrants coming into the GTA almost on a yearly basis, and I, I'm hearing now that number is potentially going to be 120 or 130 in the next couple of years, uh, and there's going to be a, a, a huge demand for housing, whether it's uh, single-family homes, multi-unit multi, multi -unit dwellings, rentals. Uh, we're seeing that trend continuing to grow. Testament to that is we're continuing to sell out communities at uh, you know record pricing and, and price where, where you know the, the naysayers and the doomsayers were saying, predicting the demand of the market, I think uh, I think that's uh, proven to be incorrect. I think uh, we've seen a bit of a slowdown, but organically the market is continuing to grow. So, yeah, I want to dwell a little bit more on this uh, topic. When you say there are people who would say market could slow down mm -hmm. uh, uh, five years, ten years, fifteen, twenty years, how do you see this market? Well, I think if you if you look at it from a macro perspective, mm -hmm. um, you know, real estate for the last hundred years has always has always gone up. Uh, it's a hedge against inflation as well. So as CPI continues to move up, you can bet that the real estate values are also going to move up with that, at least at the rate of inflation. So from a security perspective uh, and an erosion of wealth or, or, or capital, invested capital, you're not going to see that uh, in the real estate market. Uh, again, depending where you, what you choose and who you buy with and the locations you're buying, whether it's commercial, whether it's retail, whether it's residential, um, for our purposes today, I'm, I'm referring to the residential market. Um, so I would say in the next 15 to 20 years, that we're still going to see the growth. Uh, I, I'd say that we're probably going to see a leveled growth, not a crazy 15, 20% growth like we've seen in the last couple of years, uh, but definitely in the range of, I'd say, 5 to 10%. Five to ten percent growth, and in which segment do you see the maximum growth, um, or do you see any even growth? Whether you see it in condo market or semi detached luxury homes. So, so we're in a bit of a weird place now because we're running out of uh, you know 
greenfield and urban sprawl type of development. So uh, most municipalities are no longer encouraging that kind of development. So you're, you're seeing a bit of a slowdown from a sales perspective. Uh, and, and I don't think that's a uh, result of a slow or soft market. I think that's a result of low supply. Um, you look at the low-rise market where historically, you know, as, as, as early as 2014, we were selling anywhere from 17,000 to 21,000 low-rise homes in the GTA. You know, last year I believe we booked between 3,800 or 3,900 low-rise homes. Um, and the shift has moved into more of the high-rise multi-unit type of development where now we're selling 15, 16, 17,000 units of multi-family condominiums. Uh, so you're seeing a bit of a, a change in demand from the consumer. Uh, and, and that could be driven by price points as well, where the multifamily units are still more attainable for you know, the everyday people working uh, and more attractive from a rental perspective to introduce, to buy and then rent uh, to the general community. All right, and let's talk about your uh, Eddie uh, developments, you know. Uh, what are the current projects that you are doing in GTA? Sure, so we've got, uh, we've got a few new projects launching in the city of Toronto, but currently uh, we've got a few in Burlington. Uh, which has seen a huge South Asian uh, uh, population increase over the last uh, last couple of years, uh, and it's really become a hot uh, place to invest uh, as far as uh, as far as the GTA goes. It's centrally located on the Golden Horseshoe. You're close to the Niagara region. You're close to the downtown. We've got a beautiful, gorgeous waterfront. Uh, I'd say it's probably one of the most beautiful waterfronts in the entire GTA because it's still protected. You've got Spencer Smith Park that runs all the way across where you've got festivals and, you know, Rip Fest and Music Fest that all happen down there, you know, over the summertime and over the, the seasons. Um, and, you know, just being down by the lake is a, is a gorgeous thing to experience. Um, it's actually, it was also rated one of the best mid-sized cities in, in all of North America. Um, it was the number one a few years ago. I haven't checked the latest standings, but it was definitely number one a few years ago. Yeah. It also has one of the highest incomes per capita across the GTA as well. It's actually higher than Toronto, believe it or not. Uh, higher, than, higher than Oakville too? Uh, I don't know about Oakville, but definitely higher than, 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 uh, than Toronto. Than Toronto, huh? uh, But we are seeing a, a, a migration out of uh, the more expensive cities and, and, right. and we're pulling on some of that, right? So people right. leaving Toronto that can no longer afford Toronto or leaving Mississauga or leaving Oakville and they're you know wanting to enjoy something that's still of a great value right. where they can get the parks, they can get the great schools, great retail. Um, you know, there's a cocooning effect that's happening in the suburbs now where people only really want to live about a kilometer next to everything they need to do, whether it's their shopping, their banking, uh, and, and uh, you know, schools for their kids, and all those types of you know amenity type of uh, uh, you know activities that they would partake in on a daily basis. So uh, we're seeing a lot of that, and we're intensifying around those cocooning areas. Um, and Burlington is is perfect for that. So right. And uh, moving quickly on to you know the future, what do you see? Whether these projects will the prices keep on rising? Because that has been the discussion in the real estate market and media. The government is, seems to be concerned. Ontario and the federal both the governments they seem to be concerned. As a builder, as a developer, what do you see the prices will increase at a very, very rapid pace or just 5 to 10 percent or they might even slow? I think we're going to see a slow growth. I don't think we're going to see the crazy growth we saw over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's going to be more deliberate. Um, you know, one of the challenges is, is our incomes keeping up with uh, the values of real estate. That's, that's one of the indicators, an income to price ratio that you've got to look at. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think it's going to be a little bit steadier because what we're facing now with the new stress testing, the new uh, government regulations to soften the housing market or, or to, to, pu to pull the market down a little bit to keep it more affordable, um, you know, those types of initiatives that they're putting into place are actually working. Um, and that's not a bad thing. That's actually a good thing to keep homes more attainable for everyday people. Um, we are seeing some construction cost pressures. We're seeing municipal fee pressures with mm -hmm. development charges and things like that, okay. where you know some some cities will talk out of both sides of their mouth. Will they say we want affordable homes, but at the same time we're going to increase our development charges, which are to me are two, you know, n negating comments uh, mm -hmm. that don't don't work in the favor of the home buyer. Um, look, we've got, like I said, great projects in Burlington. Our Valero project in North Burlington. We've got Nautique, uh, beautiful uh, luxury condominium on the waterfront in Burlington. Uh, we've got Link Condos as well on Bronte Creek, uh, which is a fantastic uh, project. We've got a $200 million master plan community uh, by the Aldershot GO station, so transit station that's currently all under construction. It's a magnificent sight to see. 
uh, those are all projects with great value, right, for everyday people. And I think that, you know, at the end of the day, as a home builder, uh, especially a volume home builder like ourselves, uh, you know, we want to sell homes to everyday people. And we want to create good value. And if they're buying pre-construction, we want to see that appreciation uh, for those buyers as well. So, um, you know, I think with, with all the regulation coming in, we're still going to see a pretty steady growth in the market. What do you think as a buyer, what are the main priorities? Is this a point, a price point, or is this a location, or the amenities, what do they really look at? That's a good question. Um, looking at the buyer demographics, you've got to look at three different buyers. You've mm -hmm. got your investor buyer, right. you've got your uh, first-time buyer, and then you've got your empty nester or downsizer. Um, each one of them has their own priorities. But I think at the end of the day, uh, the investor and the first-time buyer are looking for value. Right, they're looking, where can I get in for the least amount of down payment, uh, you know, best quality product, best location, whether it's transit oriented so that my renters, if they don't drive, they can have access to transit stations, whether they're commuting to Toronto or Mississauga or anywhere along the Go Line or if they're downtown on the TTC. Um, you know, they all have their own sort of things. But what we're seeing is prices become a very um, important issue for a lot of people. Uh, I would say location would definitely be next. Mm -hmm. uh, again, things like being on transit, being next to green space with you know parks and amenities and things and views, or being by the lake where you're getting water views are, are very important. Uh, and then I would say amenities after that. What does the building offer? Um, do I have to ditch my gym membership? Do I you know have to go to a spa? Can I do I get those types of amenities at, in my building? Um, I can tell you we, we're very focused on great amenity programs in all of our communities, um, and even introducing new technology with our Addy Home Plus uh, um, platform, which allows you to do keyless entry into the suite, facial recognition coming into the lobby, uh, you know, license plate recognition going into the garage, um, being able to control all your home from a panel and an application on your phone, uh, and it's a fully IoT, so an Internet of Things building. Uh, which doesn't work like a traditional building, but it's it's uh, it's it's wired for the future, so to speak. So, uh, those are things we're focusing on, uh, and a lot of the younger millennial technology-driven buyers are starting to see value in those things. So. Right. So, uh, tell me a little bit more. You already explained a few of the, the things that when Eddie Homes, when you're building any sort of project. When you're talking about amenities, when you're talking about technology, when you're talking about all these features. Mm. So if you had to name five or maybe six features that these are very important features that you make sure these are there, what would be that? Uh, okay, uh, very, very good question. I, I definitely think technology is going to be huge. It's going to okay. be a big driver in the future. Mm -hmm. um, but technology, I don't say for the sake of just having a toy. I mean, okay. it's got to be a tool. Right. Um, whether it's providing security, whether it's eliminating pressure uh, from the property management group. Mm -hmm. We're looking at things like artificial intelligence for property management, where if you're a homeowner and you want to book an elevator, you can just text uh, with an artificial intelligent platform um, and, and you'll get a response. You can you know, book elevators, you could book move outs, you could uh, book cleanings, book amenities. All these types of things can be done via text and you're never really talking to any real person. Right. Um, so we're looking at the new wave of, of you know, the frontier, but that's got to Th that's got to provide a benefit to the condominium and whether it's a reduced cost in the reduced condo fees because you're reducing the manpower, reducing the concierge. Um, if I could say, so technology definitely would be the top, uh, a gym would be the top. Um, uh, I would say... Because of health, you know, gym is there. Well, the gym is uh, absolutely, I mean, there's a huge uh, wellness movement that's yes, happening. Yes, We're seeing a lot of younger people that yes. that's a big thing for that's them. Thing, yeah. But but more importantly than just a gym, there's other things like, you know, infrared saunas that we're looking at, which are now, you know, we've, the, the study and the science says it's beneficial for recovery and inflammation and all these things. Yes. Uh, hot, cold plunge pools, for example, which are good for cir circulation and changing your physiology for recovery. Mm -hmm. um, so we have all these things. We're putting all these things in our condo buildings. Um, I would say outdoor space is very important. Uh, specifically if you're entertaining in a small condo but then you you know you're gonna have a party or a few guests or family over you want to be able to have some outdoor entertainment space so that you know you can have a dinner party bring a chef or somebody cooks or you cater some food or whatever the case may be um, you know I, I find these are important but pets are also very important for in, in North America yeah. uh, we're putting new pet spas in all of our buildings uh, where you can wash the pets before you bring them up into your unit and that keeps for a cleaner building um, we're also looking at uh, meeting spaces and and um, 
uh, business centers within the buildings themselves. A lot of entrepreneurs today with technology are working at home. Um, you know, whether they're a startup, whether they're um, coming up with a new idea, or whether they're, they're, they're employed but want to have meetings in their own public spaces close to home, we're building out those business centers with full connectivity, Wi-Fi, um, access to big screens, meeting rooms, and things like that. So yeah, that's, you know, we're seeing those trends and, and we're seeing a big response to those uh, amenities that we're creating. Right. Just for our viewers' benefit, I'd like to tell you that uh, the website is being continuously displayed at the bottom of the screen, so you can uh, go check out the website and all the projects that uh, Harry Group is uh, right now presenting. Quickly moving on to the last question, what is your vision for the future? I mean, do you really want to grow this company big or any other vision? Yeah, uh, we've, got a, we've got a big uh, vision for our company. Um, we want to be the, uh, the top real estate player, the, the brand synonymous with being you know, the biggest, delivering the most value, and most importantly, which is our core value number one, the most customer-centric company that really focuses on delivering value uh, and five-star world-class service to all of our customers. That's a mission that we're driving. Um, we're going to be looking at multi-asset classes in the future as well. Uh, we're launching a new platform called Addy Capital Partners, uh, which allows for private equity investment aside with the Addy Development Group so that you can be invested in our projects. Uh, it is for accredited institu and institutional investors. Um, so that's a new venture that's coming out in the future as well. So, all right. Yeah. Arik, thank you very much for your time. Absolutely. And we wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. Hope you enjoyed today's discussion. That's all for tonight. Keep watching Channel Y. Watching Channel Y. Channel Y. A South Asian Canadian channel.